Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Deck. In this episode I want to show you how you can use my DXF files for laser cutting and 3D printing. When you have downloaded one of my files, then they come something like this, divided into separate pieces. In this case here in the panel for a pedestal segment, we have the two bottom layers, so bottom and middle layer. These are cut out from clear acrylic. The top layer, which is cut out from white acrylic and the backlighting plate, which is cut out from HDF or a thin MDF plate. Down here you find also an engraving for a resin printed button. Your laser cutting tool has already assigned a tool setting to these lines here. In my case, this is already the right setting that I need to cut out three millimeter acrylic, a speed of 15 millimeter a second and a power of 25%. These settings can be different on your machine. I think you know which settings you have to use. Though the only thing that is missing is to tell him which is the engraving part here. And so you have to mark all the parts here that have to be engraved and assign a tool setting to them. When this is done, grab out a sheet of clear acrylic, cut out the first two parts here, then grab a sheet of white acrylic and cut out this part without these engraving parts, of course, for the first time. After that, you grab the backlighting material and cut out this too. When it then comes to the engraving, I'm using a technique where I place a masking tape on my honeycomb table or you can also uh, use a piece of paper and fix it on the honeycomb and then cut out only the outline of this piece here. And for this, I'm assigning a different setting to the outline. In my case, the green setting, which is a very fast moving of the laser with very little power. And so it is strong enough to just cut the paper and not burn it. When you then have cut out the outline shape of this piece here from the paper or the masking tape, then you can place your painted acrylic part into this shape. And when you haven't moved this shape here in your software, then the laser still has the same outline setting. And then you have to deactivate everything except of the engraving. So now my laser will only do um, filling the black parts here. Of course, not the small button down here. This you can delete at this moment. Yes, and then the laser will engrave your piece and you can, after this, um, applying a coat of clear varnish and you're ready to go. In this panel, there is also a 3D print file for a resin printer with which you can print out this button here. And you can use the outline of this button here to make a cutout, for example, out of a piece of um, small MDF and making a holder for this button. So you can place it in like we have done here with the green line here. And then the laser knows where this button is situated on your working surface and you can do the engraving with it. One last thing, there are cutouts for clear acrylic in this panel here. And this has to fit in there very tight like an inlay. Every laser produces a curve. So the beam is cutting through the material and there will be a curve of a specific size on your laser tool. You have to find out the size of the curve of your laser. In my case, this is 0.12 millimeters. And when we are producing inlays, for these cutouts here, then these um, inlays must be uh, bigger depending on the size of 
the curve of your machine. For example, I want to make an inlay for this cutout here. I'm making a copy of this and then I will make it bigger. Let's zoom in so that you can see this better. I'm doing an offset shape and the offset distance will be 0.12 millimeters to the outward. And now this piece is bigger and I can cut out this from clear acrylic and it will fit very tight inside of these cutouts here. This is all you have to know when you want to cut out my panels with a laser cutter. But if you don't have a laser cutter or a CNC, this is no problem. You can also make files for your 3D printer from my files. For this method, I'm using Fusion 360. You can use any other program that can do this. Again, you should know the software you are using. In Fusion, I'm going to insert and insert the DXF file. I'm selecting the plane where this file will be placed and then select my file. The file is opened automatically and keep in mind that the units in my files are millimeters. We are concentrating on this top panel here because there is everything we need to show here for this purpose. So you make an extrusion on this plate here and we don't want to extrude all the text. So this I will cut out here. Now Fusion knows that only this shape and the cutouts should be extruded and I will extrude it down now. This is important and minus three millimeter. All my constructions are made from three millimeter acrylic. So all the parts should be the same to fit to each other. If you want to do it with another size, then extrude it to whatever you like. And now you have already the finished piece that you can produce with your 3D printer. You could engrave it if you have an engraver. For example, if you have the possibility to engrave but not to cut acrylic, then this should be a method for you. Just 3D print out the piece and then engrave it. But if you can't engrave too, then we have to make the engraving with a 3D printer make our sketch visible again and then we have to decide what we want to do with the engraving. One option is that we engrave it into the piece, for example 0.2 millimeters. So now with a resin printer this is no problem if you have the possibility to print these big pieces with a resin printer then you can print out it with the text engraved and then you can fill this engraved text for example with wax and then I think it isn't backlightable but it is looking good uh, when you are looking to the panel under normal light conditions. The second option is that we raise the text. So again using the extrude tool and extrude it for example 0.5 millimeters now we have the text coming out of the piece and we can 3D print it, for example, with a white filament and then spray paint it with a color we want to have it later and then send away the surface of these texts and they will become white again. And then if your filament is backlightable, then you have a backlightable 3D printed panel from my files. So these are two methods for you to produce cockpit parts from my files. I'm receiving these questions from time to time and I thought it was time now to make a video about it to make the production for you a little bit easier. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.